Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is part 5 of my shop system tutorial. In the last part we were actually completing the whole shop system, but in this part I want to show you how we can um, actually show the player when he has not enough money, some kind of message or image directly in the center of the screen. Um, so he noticed, okay, I'm not able to buy any yeah any yeah item in this shop because i'm have no money left um and that's what we are going to create now um we can do that directly in the canvas as an extra file or extra panel itself we can also do um that in an extra or a new canvas um we can also go in and to place this stuff directly inside the shop panel. Actually, it doesn't matter where we're gonna do that. I believe we're gonna create this one directly in the shop panel itself. So we don't need to take care of anything at all. What I want to create is an image directly in the center of the screen and I want to make sure that this one is stretching over the wall place like this. So when this is going to be blended in, um, this shop, um, yeah, this image will be automatically stretched even if we are going to maximize on play. Wait a second until this is going to load. As you can see, it will automatically fit the screen from the left to the right. That's what we need to take care of at this particular point. We can also uh, make this one smaller or bigger depending on how we want that. We can also animate this later on or do anything like blending in, blending out, but I don't want to go into that. Um, that's just too much. We don't need actually all of that. What I want to have as a sprite is again my um, button background image as I already have on this button in here and all the other things. I could also create any other button and I could even use my border um, for this but this is not actually best seen so I believe I'm gonna do that or use that with a light uh, gray button image in here. I can also again reduce the size a bit so um, maybe to this one and gonna center this one out. So it's just overlaying later on when we are creating um, or actually um, yeah uh, putting this one on or off. Okay what I also want to have is on that image directly under it is a UI text and this text is going to be maybe a red color so the player knows oh there's something wrong. I also want to activate best fit and I maybe go in and stretch this to a cool size. So maybe to almost the maximum in here I'm gonna center the whole text area. I also go and center this one in here and down in there. Maybe the maximum size can also be 60 or something, so the text is going to be bigger. Also, we can make stuff bold and whatever our um, yeah current um, yeah what our current font is going to give us as an option. Um, okay, so now we have that. What we want is we want to have a message in here, something like not enough money. So the player knows, okay, I'm not able to buy that. Um, so this is noticeable or make sure it is big enough. So when this pops up, um, when we are trying to buy something we don't have enough money for, then we want to make activate that and after a given amount of time we want to deactivate the wall panel itself. And how can we do that? Well, at first, since this image now is part of the shop panel, we can actually take and use the complete weapon shop itself and um, create some small function in there which is taking care of the timing for us. Um, and we can also place all effects or any effects directly on it. So also since this is our uh, persistent or kind of persistent or static game object we are able to access this from any buy button as well. So when we are pressing on a buy button and we get a return of no you don't have enough money then we want to activate this one. And I will go over and show you this one right now. So we go to our scripts folder, shop system, and we open up the buy button script. And once open, we're gonna go forward. So when you are looking at uh, the buy button on click function we just created in the earlier parts, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. 
uh, you notice that we still have our debug line in here, not enough money, and that is um, where we go in later on and um, pass over or actually start the function directly we're gonna create in the weapon shop itself so it can show us the image for or actually yeah the image and the text we don't have any money left um, since this image is going to be handled like a game object we're gonna just say public game object and this is just going to be our maybe warning warning image or something like that doesn't matter what we're gonna do is we need to deactivate the warning image when we are starting the shop so it's not activated so we say warning image dot set active and brackets um, false so it's not going to be active when we are starting the game we can instantly test this one out so we go back let unity decompile uh, everything in here also in the shop panel we go down and we should see when it's done compiling the warning image as you can see as a game object what we now do is we just drag the image the warning image basically inside of that I can also go in and rename this one warning image so we know okay this is the one we just have in here you can also recheck everything is cool and renamed as it is so when we now press play I'm gonna not go and maximize this right now this should be automatically deactivated as you can see here warning Im image is now deactivated what we want to do by code is when we are not able to buy this we want to activate that let a timer run and then deactivate it after the time is over so um, we can um, add a public value as well for the time a uh, time actually we want to wait until the image gets um, deactivated again or uh, we don't need to it doesn't matter but what we want to create is a bool it doesn't need to be public but uh, private a bool which is actually telling us if this is uh, the warning is active or not or yeah warning warning active so we need that bool we're gonna set this one to false in the beginning um, we don't need to because uh, basically this is automatically set to be false when we're not um, yeah, enabling or entering any stuff in here. So what we want to avoid is that we run the same later on or the same uh, function later on twice or more than uh, depending on how often the player is pressing or hammering the buy button. So with that bool we're gonna avoid that um, this can happen so it's not showing that all that stuff the whole time okay so now we're gonna create the function I was just talking about it needs to be public so we have access from outside and it's not a function in this case it's called an IE numerator and we're gonna show warning we're gonna name this show warning so the IE numerator is a function where we can use time to plan ahead what's happening after a given amount of time what we want to do at first is we want to test oops uh, we want to test if warning image is active or not so if warning active is false or true no if warning uh, active is true so without any exclamation mark or uh, or anything else just like that if it is true we want to say we yield return uh, I believe it's just a real return or yield break oh no I believe it's yield break so we break out the I numerator we don't want to start a new one at this particular point what we do after that we're gonna set warning active to be true warning active it's going to be equal to true so Let's assume this is false, it will not break from, break out the i numerator, but will come at this point 
and we are setting this one actively to true. So when we are pressing the same button once again, it will be true and will break. So we don't have any double running I enumerators. At the very end, we're gonna say warning active is going to be false. And now comes the stuff we need to plan ahead inside that I enumerator. So when we are setting this one to true, we want to have a timer running and we want to set our warning image to be true as well or actually to set active to be true. So we activate that when we're pressing on it. Then we're gonna start our timer like yield return new wait for seconds and now we can wait for a given amount of seconds. Again we can create a uh, an integer directly in the top so we have the possibility to manipulate that directly on that integer or we're gonna just pass in any time in as a float value like for example one or two seconds. We don't need more than that. After the amount of waiting is completed we want to go and set the warning image back to be false. So it's not seen anymore. And we're gonna set warning active to be false as well. So everything um, like that and there you go. Don't forget to save. Um, also I'm gonna go in Unity and see if I have any errors. So I let uh, compile this stuff for now. Looks good. No error message, no nothing. Now we need to go to the buy button and we need to call the show warning method from the buy button when we're not having enough money. And so what we're gonna do is, ah, we need to create another extra function. Um, uh, because uh, this call could cause some problems. I believe we don't gonna, uh, make this one public. Maybe we need to change this one later on. I'm gonna test this one out. What we need to do is we need to say we want to start a coroutine and the coroutine is basically sitting in the weapon shop. So weapon shop dot weapon shop dot and now we have show warning and we want to start this one. If this is not working we're gonna have to create an extra function directly um, in here, which is doing nothing else than just starting the coroutine directly in the weapon shop. But let's test this one out at first. So let's compile everything. Um, I hope I have saved the buy button script. Uh, weapon shop is not saved, so I'm gonna save this one. Buy button is saved, so make sure you save as well. And now let's test this one out. So usually I am able to buy the kitchen knife, it's sold out, we are using this, but when I try to buy the katana because it's 10k worse, we're gonna get that for one second, that message, uh, we don't have enough money. Also, as you can see, the I number is, rater is only starting once, no matter how often I press that particular button. We still get the debug line, but we don't get the I number rater a second or a third time or whatever. So it's not keeping in um, yeah, activating all of that and resetting the timer. And that's what we wanted to take care of. So one second might be a bit too, too, uh, too small number. So maybe two seconds, uh, for showing us, uh, that particular image. Gonna recompile everything once again. And when we're trying to buy the container once again, we're gonna get this message for two seconds. We can still, uh, press on that particular buttons, but we don't need to. Also, we are not able to press through that image now, but when the image is gone, then we are able to buy the army knife, for example. So, yeah. And that's everything I wanted to cover in this small, short tutorial rest. I believe that's everything, uh, what is needed for a weapon shop. You can also, um, let anything else instead of uh, showing some kind of image or something you can also go in and uh, yeah let the text blink for example or do anything else you have now the tools to do everything you like you can tint um, the color for that 
for a given amount of time so the player also knows oh no you don't have enough money left so instead of using an image you can use that or even anything else or any other kind of image or image animation stuff for example if you like to feel free to do everything you like and please thanks for watching the tutorial i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already thumbs this video up if you like it and feel free to become my patron or donate by using PayPal to support me and my channel in the future. All links will be below in the description. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.